have this countdown, we have the photographic evidence. A couple of years ago, a man named Edward came forward claiming that he was a time traveler from the year 5000. He even came with evidence. Now, he used a fake name and had his identity hidden so people weren't going to come after him. So according to Edward, he claims he was part of a top secret experiment that took place in 2004. During the test, he was successfully transported in time. He was taken to LA 5000 years in the future. And it's not looking too good. He said, and I quote, I was standing on a huge wooden platform, and after I realized it was the same city, Los Angeles, but underwater. This man's claims were backed up with evidence. He took a photo of LA underwater. I don't even know what to think. Either he's good at Photoshop or he's actually a time traveler. I just thought that the water would be way more polluted than that. Like, that's far too clear. You know, it's a little sketchy. In our ninth spot, we have Vladimir Putin. Turns out that the president of Russia is a time traveler. Take a look at these photos. First, we got a Russian soldier from 1920, and he looks identical to Putin. Then we have another Russian soldier from 1941, and he also looks like a young Putin who is pictured on the far right. Too eerie. Either he's a mortal or he's a time traveler. Moving on to number eight, we have the TikTok time traveler. Now, I talked about this case briefly before, and I'm throwing it on today's list because it's the most recent case of time travel. Basically, a guy named Javier claims that he is a time traveler who is now stuck in the year 2027. The scariest part is that the entire human race is wiped out by then. On his TikTok page, he posts videos of him wandering the streets of Spain alone. He has gone to stadiums, airports, police stations, hospitals, restaurants, and malls. No one is there except himself, which is crazy because normally those places would be packed with people, but they aren't. So here's the thing, either he's a time traveler and was sent to the future to warn us, or he's somehow faking it. But a number of people have analyzed his videos. Some people believe he edits everyone out of the video. Sure, it's possible to edit objects and people out of videos, but it's harder to do with multiple people in the shot, in which there would be, and it's harder if the people are moving around, which they would be. Another theory is that these videos were pre-filmed, that they were filmed during the pandemic when they were under lockdown and had a curfew. But in order to prove that that's not the case, he gets his followers to tell him where he should go next. He then will go to that specific place and prove no one is there. The freakiest part is he has gone to hospitals. If this was filmed during the pandemic, the hospitals would be filled with people. But when he walks around, no one, and I mean no one, is there. Maybe this is real and we should take him seriously. Who knows? But believe what you want to believe. In our seventh spot, we have the 800 year old cell phone. In 2016, a group of researchers unearthed an ancient looking cell phone in Austria. The phone is covered in cuneiform writing, which dates back to thousands of years ago, making this object thousands of years old. But obviously, we didn't have phones back then, when this clearly looks like it was modeled after a Nokia phone. Alien hunters believe that it comes from an advanced civilization that has come to Earth. Others believe that this object is proof of time travel. What's even more weird is that I can't seem to find much about this phone online, so it looks like no one has debunked it yet. Maybe it's real then, who knows? In our sixth spot, we have the man named Noah. Back in 2018, a man came forward claiming that he was a time traveler from the year 2030. He called himself Noah, obviously it's not his real name, and he sat down for a television interview to share with the world what life is like in 2030. But of course, his face and voice were distorted to protect his identity. He said that he can't let anyone know who he really is. Basically, he said that he will be killed for speaking the truth about time travel. He goes on to prove that he's a real time traveler by getting an x-ray of his hand. Upon doing so, it's revealed that there's a weird device implemented in his wrist. That's what Noah says is what helps him when he time travels. Not only that, but he underwent a lie detector test and he passed it, showing that his claims were real. Now, what did he say is in store for the future? Well, since this occurred in 2018, he said that in 2019, it will be filled with more UFO sightings, which yes, that was true. He also claims that in 2028, that's when aliens will come down to Earth, and that's also the year that the government will reveal that time travel is real. That's pretty intense, if you ask me. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the Antikythera mechanism. In 1900s, a team of divers exploring the Greek island of Antikythera made a fascinating discovery. They came across an ancient shipwreck. 
The ship was filled with statues, jewelry, coins, pottery, you name it. They were all like, booyah, jackpot. As they continued searching the ship though, they came across this weird object. It was a blob of corroded bronze and wood. Two years later, an archaeologist decided to examine this and discovered it was an astronomical clock. But the items came from ancient Greece and clocks hadn't been invented then. This item was in similar size to a mantle clock and the bits of wood fragments on it suggest that it was probably in a wooden case. They also believe the case would have had like a circular face or rotating hands. There was also a knob on the side and the mechanism could rotate forwards and backwards. Needless to say, it was a fairly complex object for that time period, so some believe that it was left by a time traveler. If not, then what could this device be, and how come it was so advanced for its time? In our fourth spot, we have the year 3207. The world was time machine. They took me to a room filled by many kinds of displays, gadgets, wires, it I had never ever seen. The head of project came to me and told all about that mystical project. A couple of years ago, an unidentified Greek man came forward saying that he traveled in time to the year 3207. He claims that he was shot forward in time and spent two days in the year 3207 as part of a top secret military program. He was paid $100,000 to do so. That after some minutes they would send me to the year 3207. As I understood, I was kind of laboratory mouse for them, you know. But the money and career that I was suggested were worthy for it. He claims that in the future, the buildings were massive, triple the size that they are today. He also says that there were flying cars and that there was strange colored grass. It wasn't green, but a deep purple. And lastly, he said that aliens, humans, big animals, and robots were all walking together down the street. Uh, that's pretty interesting, not gonna lie. Don't know if I believe that guy, but some people do. I mean, he also showed photographic evidence, but claims that the photos got a bit distorted while going through the whole time travel process. To me, they kind of just look like bad Photoshop, but you decide. In our third spot, we have Paul Dynick. Now, if you haven't heard about this case before, then oh, you're in for a shock. In 1921, a man named Paul Dynick, a Swiss Australian teacher, slipped into a coma for about a year. For that year, he claimed that he went to the year 3096, where he switched consciousness with a man named Andrew Northman. One minute he was in a coma, next he's inside Andrew's body speaking a foreign language. For that year, he was living as Andrew. Paul was so scared to tell anyone of this experience, so he just wrote it in his diary and kept it a secret. However, just before he passed away, he gave his diary to one of his students to translate, and that's when it was revealed that he had somehow time traveled to the future. It's pretty insane. Could he be telling the truth, or was it all just a coma dream? In our second spot, we have the time traveling murderer. Okay, this next story is going to leave you baffled. Back in 2014, a woman was found dead in London. It was clearly a murder. Thankfully, her attacker's DNA was found all over her body. Upon doing a forensics test, they got a match. But here's the thing. The supposed attacker was found dead a full three weeks before her victim. So how is it possible for her to kill someone when she had already died? So people think that the killer was a time traveler, and that days before her own death, she went a couple weeks into the future to kill this woman. I don't even know. It's just an insane case, if you ask me. And in our number one spot today, we had the London Hammer. Back in 1936, Texas, a man named Max Hahn and his wife were out for a walk when they stumbled upon this odd rock with a tool sticking directly out of it. This is what is now called the London Hammer, or the London Artifact. It was discovered to be part of a hammer that was trapped inside a rock that dates back to being over 400 million years old. Clearly, back then, they did not have hammers, so how the heck did a modern day human made tool date back to a time where humans weren't even around? Theory goes that it was dropped by a time traveler, but I want to know who would go that far back in time? Well, let me know in the comments below, would you rather travel to the past or the future? Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Moberly Jordan incident. This is one of the most famous cases of possible time travel, but it also might just be a ghost story. I don't know. I'm not here to tell you what to think, so I'll just tell you the story and let you decide for yourself. In 1901, two professors from St. Hugh's College in Oxford, England, went 
decided to take a little visit to the Palace of Versailles, which if you didn't know was the French royal home until the monarchy was abolished in 1792. That means that this was once the home of Marie Antoinette, and she was one of the last royals to live there before she was executed in 1793. So on this visit in 1901 by these two professors, they're just walking around, seeing the sights, enjoying their time. As they're checking out the private retreat built for Marie Antoinette by her husband Louis the 16th, boom, out of nowhere, these two just see the Marie Antoinette sitting there sketching away, dressed in 1780s attire. But not only her, there were a bunch of people also dressed in this same sort of way who seemingly just appeared out of nowhere. Just as quickly as they appeared, however, once the tour guide approached the two professors, all of the people vanished. The pair ended up writing a book about their experience which was quite successful because of how grounded it seemed. Did they travel through time? Did they see ghosts? Or is this all just made up? In our number 9 spot today we have the bookstore. In 1996 a man and his wife were out in Liverpool doing a bit of shopping. The man's wife went into a bookstore and instead of accompanying her there, he wandered off down the street in search of a CD store. As he strolled down the street he began to notice everything getting quiet. After this he noticed a van that looked like it was from the 1950s that honked and swerved around him. At this moment he realized that he was somehow standing in the middle of the street and that everyone around him was dressed in 50s styled clothing. Like anyone would be in this situation, he was super confused and he went to head back to the bookstore where he had left his wife, but when he turned around, the bookstore didn't even exist anymore. Where the bookstore was a minute ago was now a women's clothing store, and as soon as he did, it turned back into the bookshop he had initially left his wife in. He was back in 1996 and could not figure out what the heck had just happened to him. After this whole ordeal, he also learned that the clothing store he had seen and gone into hadn't existed since the 1950s either. Whether this is a real time travel story or there's some sort of other explanation behind it, that poor man was probably absolutely terrified. In our number 8 spot today we have Hutton and Brandt. In 1932, journalist J. Bernard Hutton and photographer Joachim Brandt were sent by the German newspaper to the Hamburg shipyard in order to do a story. Everything was going fine and well and normal and honestly kind of uneventful until things took a large crazy turn. Both Hutton and Brandt realized that they were caught in an air raid and had bombs raining down around them. Brandt, like the dedicated photographer he was, snapped a few photos, but the pair quickly evacuated the area to get to safety. When they returned to central Hamburg all shaken up, no one believed their story at all. They got the photos developed in order to show their proof, but to their surprise, the photos showed no such thing that would suggest the story they were telling. With no evidence and no one around who would believe them, the pair had no choice but to just go on living their lives. 11 years later, however, Hutton was living in London and he opened up the newspaper one day to see what he never expected. The newspaper that day detailed the story of Operation Gomorrah, which was an air raid on Hamburg and the photos in the paper looked exactly like what he had experienced 11 years earlier. Did these two somehow end up getting teleported to a time 11 years later while they were out doing that story that day? I truly don't know what other kinds of explanations there could be. In our number 7 spot today we have Live Your Lie. A guy on TikTok who goes by the username Live Your Lie has begun to post videos claiming that he is a time traveler from the year 3036 and he offers his warnings to all of us. He tells his followers that they are as free as they will ever be right now and that our kids won't even see freedom. He says, so suck it up because as simple minded as your time period is, you got it pretty good, you just don't know it. Okay Mr. Live Your Lie, don't absolutely roast us all. Anyway, when I Asked about the world population in his year, he says it's just over 2 billion people. He talks about something called the Big Blackout, which he says happens in December of 2052. He says that the Big Blackout is when basically everything goes dark for upwards of 5 years, the internet, the power, it all gets disconnected on account of what's called the terrors, but many speculate otherwise. He says that during these years there's riots, turmoil, and that it's just the worst of times, and that it takes 20 years for things to get fully back online. He also adds that in the year 3036 we still have zoos, but all of the largest animals are gone, so the zoos then actually just consist of animals like dogs and cats. I'm honestly not sure what to make of this one, like if he really is a time traveler I appreciate the heads up on what's to come, but couldn't he have also said like one nice thing about the future? 
Also, if time travel exists in 3036, why doesn't everyone just head back in time to when things were good? I don't know, maybe there's some sort of reason or maybe he's lying. I guess one day someone will find out for sure. In our number 6 spot today we have Sir Victor Goddard. In 1935 when Air Marshal Sir Victor Goddard was still a wing commander, he was instructed to head over to an airbase that was located in Drem, Scotland that was inactive at the moment. As he flew over the base he noticed it was in pretty terrible condition and that cattle had now begun grazing through the grass that found its way through the tarmac. Later on as he was still flying, he found himself in a bit of a bad spot due to terrible weather conditions. To avoid anything bad happening, he decided to land at this inactive airbase and wait out the bad weather. What's weird, however, is as he got close to the base, the torrential downpour abruptly stopped and the sky very suddenly opened up with bright sun shining down. This was weird, but not totally unexplainable. But what was unexplainable is that the inactive airbase could now be seen in full use and full of mechanics in blue overalls working on yellow planes. This was weird for a number of reasons. Firstly, he had just seen the base and it was not even close to looking like this, so how could this all have just come out of nowhere? The mechanics weren't wearing their khaki colored uniforms that were the norm then, and the Air Force didn't use yellow planes, they instead painted all of their planes silver, and there was one plane there that he wasn't able to identify or recognize. Sir Goddard left the situation completely confused and shocked, but that shock only got worse four years later when he visited Drem again. After the years that had passed when he visited again he saw the exact same scene he had seen four years before like a full deja vu moment. Did he get confused on that day four years earlier? Did he fly into the future? Was this some sort of a flight 828 situation? Unfortunately there's a good chance we may never know for sure what really happened. In our number 5 spot today we have time travel underscore zero. Ok, so this is one that at the time was both one of the most famous and one of the most believed cases around. In the year 2000 an online thread began about time travel paradoxes on a forum for the time travel institute. On the thread a user commented on how a time machine could theoretically be made and this prompted the response of a user whose screen name was time travel underscore zero and they said, wow, Paul is right on the money. I was just about to give up hope on anyone knowing who Tipler or Kerr was on this word line. By the way, number 2 is the correct answer and the basics for time travel start at CERN in about a year and end in 2034 with the first time machines built by GE. Too bad we can't post pictures or I'd show it to you. Ok, so this is obviously insinuating that whoever the heck time travel underscore zero is is a time traveler. Throughout the next year people continued to post questions and messages they had for this guy on that thread and throughout time, time travel underscore zero became known as John Titter and he told us all his story in great detail. He said that he had been sent back to 1975 in order to bring an IBM 5100 computer to his own time but he was just stopping into 2000 for a brief rest on his way back home. I guess time travel is exhausting? I personally would not know. He said that the reason for the mission to get the computer was because he needed it to debug various legacy computer programs in 2036 in order to combat a known problem where UNIX was going to have a problem in 2038 similar to what people thought was going to happen in the changeover from 1999 to 2000. There definitely are people out there who still believe that John was a real time traveler so I guess I'll just leave this one up to you to decide. In our number 4 spot today we we have the time traveling hipster. This photo appeared on the Virtual Museum of Canada website and it was originally taken in 1941. The photo is said to have been taken at the reopening of the South Fork Bridge in Goldbridge, British Columbia, Canada. At a first glance this photo is just normal and that story sounds perfectly reasonable but once we take a closer look it is clear why this photo went viral. There's that one guy in it who isn't dressed similarly to anyone else in the photo. While someone with their own unique personal style isn't exactly an anomaly, it certainly is very weird and suspicious that he seems like he could be from our current times which is exactly why he has been dubbed the time traveling hipster. It appears as though he is wearing a more modern style of sunglasses, some sort of printed t-shirt with a cardigan over top and it even looks like he is holding 
holding some sort of compact camera that wasn't exactly widespread in the 1940s. Maybe the time traveling hipster really is just that, or maybe he really just was a guy from 1941 who walked off the beaten path so that hipsters today could run. I'm not really sure what to make of this one to be honest. In our number 3 spot today we have Andrew Carlson. On January 28th, 2003, Andrew Carlson was arrested and held by the police for insider trading at Wall Street. This was because of the fact that in two weeks, through the stock market, Andrew was able to go from having $800 to making $350 million. Yep. $350 million in two weeks. That is absolutely insane. When the authorities arrested him, they assumed he made his profits through obtaining illegal insider trading information. But when they asked him how he was able to do this, Andrew said that he was actually from the year 2256, and so he knew exactly how all of the stocks were going to perform. Obviously, no one believed this story and just assumed he was telling an extremely far fetched lie, which in circumstances like this would seem like a pretty safe assumption. But guess at this, when Andrew was released on bail, he totally disappeared and despite several attempts to find him, no one has ever been able to locate him. To make matters even a little wilder, it is said that he was also able to accurately predict the exact date of the US invasion of Iraq. Not sure how, but that's what the internet tells me. In our number 2 spot today we have Edward. Edward is a man who has claimed that he has proof of the apocalypse and he even brings photos along to prove it. Edward first appeared on Apex TV which I'll be the first to admit hasn't exactly been a source of credible information, but who knows, maybe this is the time that they got it right. Edward claims that he was part of a top secret program in 2004 and that he was chosen to time travel to the year 5000. This photo I just talked about is a photo that Edward carries that shows Los Angeles completely underwater. In fact, Edward says that in the year 5000 the entire world is underwater, but humans have found a way to live on the water. He claims it happened because of global warming and explained that there was just too much CO2 in the air which step by step destructed the natural shield zone. I'm not a photoshop expert so I wouldn't even know what to look for while looking at these photos he claims to have taken in the year 5000, so you guys let me know. You photoshop experts watching. This. In our number one spot today, we have Edgar Allan Poe. Okay. I'm not gonna lie, before I started making this list, I was not convinced that time travel would be a possibility, but after making this list, I think I might be convinced that Edgar Allan Poe is a time traveler. Seriously, just hear me out on this one. There are two main examples why, and I'm gonna do my best to keep them concise. So, firstly, Poe's only completed novel was published in 1838, and it tells the tale of mutiny on a whaling ship lost at sea. The men on the ship realize that they need to resort to some extreme measures in order to stay alive, so they begin again drawing straws to see who they're going to sacrifice for food. A boy named Richard Parker drew the shortest straw, and therefore he became the next meal. Okay, so let's fast forward 46 years to 1884, and in real life there are now 4 men who have been set adrift after the sinking of a yacht. These men found themselves in a similar predicament to the novels, and I kid you not, they ended up taking the same route and elected to take the life of, and then eat, a cabin boy. The cabin boy's name? Richard Parker. Not convinced yet? Well what if I told you that he accurately predicted a scientific advancement before it was even known by, well, scientists. In 1840, Poe penned the gruesome story The Businessman, in which the narrator suffers a traumatic head injury as a child and later lives a violent life. The weird thing about this story is that he was able to grasp frontal lobe injury so well before it was even a thing that was able to be greatly studied, as the first time behavioral change caused by this kind of injury were able to be studied didn't come until 1848. An actual neurologist, Eric Altschuler, wrote, There's a dozen symptoms and he knows every single one. There's everything in that story, we've hardly learned anything more. It's so exact that it's just weird. It's like he had a time machine. Maybe I didn't convince you, but I'm not gonna lie, this convinced me. Number 10, Sir Victor Goddard. This story really freaks me out. Sir Victor Goddard was a wing commander in 1935 and he was making a trip over to an airbase in Drem, Scotland. Little did he know that this routine trip would change his life forever. As he was flying over the base, he took in the rough condition it was in. The fields were unkept with grass cracking through the tarmac and cattle had begun invading to graze. Then suddenly the weather took a miserable turn and in order to prevent an accident, he decided to make for a landing at the base. But as 
as he got closer and closer to landing, the rain began to let up and the sun broke through the clouds. Suddenly he saw a flurry of mechanics in clean and tidy blue uniforms working diligently on yellow planes. Usually the mechanics at the time formally wore khaki uniforms so the blue was a bit of a shock. Additionally they were working on yellow planes instead of silver. Goddard left shaking his head to remove whatever fever dream he was having, only to revisit the exact moment when he visited the site again 4 years later. He saw the exact same thing, blue uniforms, yellow planes and had to deal with quite a fierce bit of deja vu. Ever since this story came to light it's not hard to believe he travelled into the future. Or back in time. Number 9. Greta Thunberg's Doppelganger What doesn't this girl do? First she takes on the world's global environmental issues, gaining recognition on like every media outlet and now she may be a time traveller. Social media blew up with the time travel theories when a 19th century photo surfaced that features Greta or at least someone who looks just like her. It's true the resemblance is astounding so is this a case of time travelling, adventures or just a common gene pool? Well firstly the situation of the photo doesn't actually suit Thunberg's environmental initiatives. The photo was taken in 1898 and the three children featured in it are sifting for gold like Greta would ever be seen next to a mine. According to the University of Washington libraries the photo was also taken in the Canadian Yukon territory. Far from Greta. Greta hasn't responded to the fanatics obsessed with the photo and her silence only feeds the theories. Who knows maybe she just has one of those faces or maybe she was sent back to do more of her research. After all Greta does seem to prove time and time again that she isn't your average teen. Number 8. A mummy loves some adidas. Discovering a mummy is a pretty big deal in itself but discovering one with some pretty sweet kicks? One of the most unique and oldest pairs of shoes were discovered when a Mongolian mummy was unearthed. Her body was found in the Altai mountains in Mongolia and on her feet were a peculiar pair of shoes. They looked like trendy adidas shoes. Now they aren't actually adidas but they do feature the signature striped style of the shoe. After the restoration it was revealed that they were actually a pair of knee high boots with a striped black and red pattern. They also featured decorated buckles and leather soles. Our ancient fashionista also carried with her a clutch bag, mirror, comb, a knife and a saddle with the remains of a horse. So lots lots to do. Researchers estimate that she died due to a blow to the head. Interesting. I know I know this may have taken the wind out of your sails but considering they appear so similar to today's designs could it be that she might have gotten her inspiration from a distant traveler? A traveler who sported remarkable striped leather shoes and inspired the 1000 year old seamstress? Number 7. The Philadelphia Survivor The Philadelphia Experiment is perhaps one of the most famous urban legends slash conspiracy theories slash actual historical event. For context the Philadelphia Experiment is an alleged military experiment that was carried out by the US Navy. In 1943 the USS Eldridge allegedly was made invisible and teleported from Pennsylvania to Virginia. Either through time or parallel universe. What's the difference really? The story actually originated in 1955 when ex merchant marine Carl M. Allen claimed to witness the event. He sent a book full of handwritten annotations to prove it, though it might be a hoax. Who knows? Did this actually happen? Who knows? But the movie definitely did, and it did nothing to help the conspiracy theories circling the world. But a man named Alfred Bielek found the film incredibly life changing, as while watching it, he realized who he actually was the lone survivor of the experiment. After seeing the 1988 film, Bielek's memories came flooding back, and he was actually Ed Cameron, and he had been born in 1916. So if this was real, it ticks all the boxes parallel universes, time travel, aliens, Philadelphia. Science. Number six, the missing hotel. This one gives me like Howl's Moving Castle vibes. Could be because I watched it recently for like the 12th time, so I don't know. But a building that's there one minute and then gone the next. I don't know. A couple traveling Europe had a unique experience, one they will never forget despite history seeming to. This story was featured on a TV series called Strange But True. Two couples headed off to Spain in the 1970s to live their best lives, but time travel wasn't on the itinerary. They were on their way from England, passing through France when they decided to stop and search for accommodations. Everywhere in Montelamar was packed save one place that was simply labeled hotel. They got a room that was tremendously old fashioned with no glass in the windows and no phone, but it was the breakfast the next morning that shocked them. The other guests were dressed in like outdated clothing and their breakfast only came out to 19 francs like which was way lower than what they thought. Hey that's a win. They took tons of pictures of the vintage hotel and planned on returning next time they were in Europe. But the hotel disappeared. When they looked for the hotel again it was no longer there and no locals knew what the heck they were talking about. Even eerier their photographs did not develop like it had all been a glitch. Number 5. The bridge opening. Next up we have this 
this picture. See if you can spot the one who is out of place. Found him? In case you missed it, we are talking about the gent dressed in the all too familiar type of like hipster style. He sticks out like a sore thumb with his thick black glasses, graphic t-shirt and what looks to be some kind of hooded cardigan. This photo blew up across time travel enthusiast forums like he's the ultimate hipster. The location of the photo was at the reopening of the Southport Bridge in Goldbridge, British Columbia in 1941. He also looks to be the, like the youngest guy in the photo. Strange considering he would have been enlisted in the Canadian Army at that point. Correct me if I'm wrong. So why is such a young circa 2010 sporting gent standing at the Southport Bridge? Could it be he was sent back to document the event and was accidentally documented himself? <laughs> Number 4, Andrew Carlson. This next one is for all my game stoppers out there who love that Robin Hood story. I did too. I really did. It sounds like Andrew Carlson pulled a biff from Back to the Future though. Police arrested the 44 year old in 2003 when he was somehow able to turn $800 into $350 million over two weeks. Like that's the damn dream man. Authorities believe that he must have had insider help. Which according to Andrew wasn't exactly untrue. Andrew told the court that he was actually a time Time traveler from the year 2256, and that is how he knew. Obviously, who the heck would believe that ridiculous excuse? But wait, it gets weirder. Andrew disappeared without a trace. A month later, a mysterious benefactor paid a million dollar buyout to get him out. On April 2nd, Andrew was supposed to meet with his lawyer, but he had entirely disappeared without a trace. No evidence of his existence could be found before the year 2002. Andrew, can you come back and just tell me how you did that? That'd be great, you know? Anyways, number three, put your phone away. When I go to my next concert, there is one thing I really hope I don't see. People watching like the whole th thing through their phones while they're at a live concert, it just bothers me so much. Like maybe do it once to commemorate it, but not the entire time, my dude, you know? Someone should have said that to this time traveler in the background of Mike Tyson's 1994 match with Peter McNeely. Check this out. Yup, right in the background is a smartphone. Obviously, right? I still remember my mom having like a tiny screen dial phone well into like 2001. There was no way what looks to be a galaxy phone would be around back then. Debunk this photo if you want, but if that is indeed a time traveler who was sent back, dude, time and place. Number two, the Nazca astronaut. Out of all the items on this list, this is the largest example of time travel in history by sheer size. The Nazca lines are located 250 miles south of Lima, Peru and feature over 70 massive depictions of animals that can only be seen from the sky. But the one we are talking about is definitely either a sign for aliens or time travel. Among the 70 images, there's a strange humanoid figure that looks remarkably similar to an astronaut. Some of the designs from the geoglyphs measure around 30 miles and experts have no idea how or why these drawings were created with such precision. The astronaut is the strangest of them all. It kind of looks like not only an astronaut, but it looks like it's waving, you know? Weird. Was this an homage to a strange spaceman who came traveling and visited the people of Peru? I personally wouldn't be surprised. And last but not least, Edgar Allan Poe. This last and final one, I have to thank Olivia for like <laughs> helping me dive down this rabbit hole because it really is convincing. I'm fully on board. So is she. So here we go. Edgar Allan Poe has to have been a time traveler, or maybe he still is. Either way, he must have had some sixth sense. Okay, so first off, he predicted the future. 46 years after Edgar published his first novel called The Narrative of Arthur Gordon Pym of Nantucket in 1838, something weird happened. At one point in the book, their ship, Grampus, became stranded without food or water after a mutiny and must resort to desperate measures. The crew draws straws to see who would be sacrificed for sustenance, a boy named Richard Parker. Parker lost the deal. 46 years later, in 1884, the exact thing happens with the exception that the boat was a sinking yacht. Four men were set adrift and forced to do the same thing and guess the name of the boy who died. Richard Parker. Example 1. Example 2, 1840, Poe penned the story called The Businessman Who Endures a Violent Life After a Head Injury. He was hit in the head as a young kid, causing an injury to his frontal lobe, which Poe seemed to entirely understand in intricate detail. But the first time behavioral changes caused by this kind of injury were able to be studied didn't come until 1848. An actual neurologist, Eric Altshuler, wrote, and I quote, There's dozens of symptoms and he knows every single one. There's everything in that story, we've hardly learned anything more. It's it's so exact that it's just weird and it's like he had a time machine." Unquote. Point three. Who is the figure who visits Poe's grave every year and puts a rose on it? Perhaps Poe is coming back to honor a past life. After all, why is a raven like a writing desk? Because Poe wrote on both. Number 10. 
Project Pegasus, and the Chrononauts. While that may sound like a sweet alt-rock band, Project Pegasus didn't have anything to do with music, but with moving through time. Seattle attorney Andrew Basaggio has been making claims since 2004 that when he was younger, starting at the age of 7, he participated in the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, Project Pegasus, focusing on teleportation and time travel. He and a few others were chosen at a young age because, allegedly, children could adapt well to the strains of moving between past, present, and future. Along with his fellow chrononauts, love the name, he adventured throughout time to places like the Gettysburg Address in 1863 and to Ford's Theater to witness the assassination of President Lincoln, quote, five or six times. I don't know why he was so obsessed with Lincoln. He was allegedly even captured in a photograph. He claims that he witnessed eight different time travel technologies throughout the course of the project and that most were based on engineering specs and sketches by Nikola Tesla. And if one person was to come up with teleportation or time travel, I think it would be Tesla himself. Pure genius, that one. Andrew even met himself a few times in the past and surprisingly didn't cause a paradox. His claims are supported by others who say that the Defense Department has had time travel capabilities for over 40 years but has kept it secret. Andrew Basaggio also ran for president in 2016, but we all know how that turned out. Maybe he should have used time travel to change the outcome. Number 9. Vrilin Ashtar Radio Incident On Saturday, November 26th, 1977, in the southern United Kingdom, a mysterious voice interrupted a news broadcast and gave strange commands and predictions of the future. Accompanied by unsettling pulsing noises and echoes, the electronic sounding voice claimed to be Vrilin, a representative of the Ashtar Galactic Command. Alien or future beings sent to deliver a warning message that humans must denounce and remove all of their weapons of evil in order for an age of peace and prosperity to come to fruition, the age of Aquarius. If humans do not comply and turn from their evil ways, humanity will fall. Here's a little clip. This is the voice of Allah, representative of the Ashtar Galactic speaking to you. Though the message is foreboding and super creepy, this messenger from the future actually makes some good points and gives some decent advice, like, have no fear, seek only to know yourselves and live in harmony with the ways of your planet Earth. Seems like they were listening to the hippies at the time, and they had the right idea. After taking control of the station, they bid farewell and said they would leave our plane of existence, leaving us with their final words, may you be blessed by the supreme love and truth of the cosmos. Aww. Thanks, Verlin. Number 8. Guardian Angel In 2019, a video surfaced of a shop owner in Turkey tending to some of his merchandise. Very normal, nothing to see here. Until a man calmly walks up behind him and casually taps him on the shoulder as he walks by, causing the shop owner to turn around. But not a moment later, a gate from a large truck driving by swings open, nearly killing him. And if it wasn't for this mystery man's actions, the shop owner would surely be dead. The truck driver returned to apologize for what had happened, but the mysterious stranger was nowhere to be found. Some commenters believe that this man had come back from the future to save lives. Perhaps not just the shopkeeps. That's the only one that we caught on camera. Others have noticed that the two men look similar. Even their outfits aren't far off, implying that maybe it's the same man or their son somehow come back from the future. Though it looks like it was filmed on a potato, so who can be sure? Number 7. Rudolph Fence The story of Rudolph Fence is one one that has been hotly debated amongst the time travel investigation community. In 1951, people in Times Square in New York City noticed a man suddenly appear, wearing 19th century clothing. He appeared to be disoriented and confused, and after running into an intersection in a daze, he was hit by a car and fatally injured. When his body was inspected, they found strange items in his possession that appeared to have come from another time. A copper token for a beer worth five cents bearing the name of a saloon, which was unknown even to older residents of the area. A bill for the care of a horse and the washing of a carriage made by a stable that was not listed in any address book. Old banknotes, business cards with his name and address, as well as a letter sent to him postmarked in 1876. These items in his attire have led people to believe that Rudolph was a man from the past, probably from 1876, who unfortunately slipped through time to a place that he didn't or couldn't comprehend, and his confusion ultimately killed him. Tragic story, really. Number 6. Bob White in 2003, Dave Hill, along with countless others, received an email from Bob White. Normally, a spam email would just get ignored by Dave, but this one was too strange to pass up. The email explained that he needed help from a time traveler, or any alien disguised as human, because his life had been severely tampered with, and he needed, quote, temporal reversion to correct it. He resorted to the internet to find help. You ever come across anything like time travel? 
He asked the people receiving the message for strange mechanical parts that didn't exist, like an AMD dimensional warp generator module containing the GRC79 induction motor, or an Acme 5X24 series time transducing capacitor with built in temporal displacement. I don't even think a Time Lord could help him find these ridiculous sounding parts. But Dave Hill decided to have some fun and responded to his message saying that he could get what he needed. And he even sent an old hard drive motor to Bob, claiming that it was a warp generator, which Bob gratefully accepted, believing it was the part he needed. It's a time machine, Napoleon. We bought it online. You're right. It works, Napoleon. You don't even know. It was later revealed that Bob White was a man named Robbie Tadino, a 22 year old from Massachusetts who admitted to sending over 100 million messages for help out into cyberspace, and truly believed and still does believe that he was affected by time travel and needs to make a machine to fix it. The story he describes and the machine he seems intent on building is so specific that many people are convinced he has met time travelers or aliens and is really trying to recreate their technology with human things that just don't exist yet. Let's just hope he gets it all sorted out. Number five, the Philadelphia Experiment and Montauk Project. I've talked about these before in a previous video, but they require another mention here as there are so many accounts of what happened that it's overwhelming. Allegedly, there was a secret military operation being performed in 1943 at the shipyard aboard the USS Eldridge. The, ex the experiment involved cloaking, not time travel, strangely enough, but when they attempted to conceal the ship with the technology they developed, the ship did indeed disappear, but that was because it was moved 10 minutes into the past, which reportedly caused some of the crew to go mad. And later, another secret military operation called the Montauk Project was tasked with creating gates for time travel, using psychic links from children who are much more attuned to these kinds of things apparently, and can open their minds more, so the witnesses claim. One of these many gates that were opened apparently led back to the USS Eldridge during the 10 minutes of time dilation, but these two experiments are linked by one person who has since shared their experience. Number 4, Al Bielik. Al Bielik was a Navy officer aboard the USS USS Eldridge during the Philadelphia experiment, also known as Project Rainbow. And when the time jump occurred, he wasn't sent 10 minutes into the past, he claims that he was sent forward to the year 2137. When he was rescued from the water, he was taken to a futuristic hospital, where he was treated for radiation sickness they say he developed from the time jump. He described major differences in the world, the coastlines being swallowed by the oceans, worldwide government collapse followed by the rise of a system that allowed everyone to get what they need when they needed it, for free, by abolishing the concept of money. He was eventually sent back and continued to live his life, burdened by what he had learned, with few believing him, until he was later recruited by the Montauk Project as their program director for the psychics involved with creating the time tunnels, which he used to investigate as far back as 100,000 BC and as far forward as the year 6037. Of course, he maintains that the government has done everything in their power to stop him from revealing all of this, disavowing him once he went public with his stories. Do you believe his story? Let me know in the comments. Number three, time traveling Trump. Now, I don't like talking about this former first family very much unless it has to do with all the current investigations, but some of these coincidences are just a little too eerie, though I do believe that they are just that. This conspiracy theory came from a discovery on the Library of Congress website, where readers found books from the 1890s, one called Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey, and another called 1900, or The Last President. The first is about a young man named Baron Trump, who discovers portals for time travel, and at one point in the book he was actually guided by a man named Dawn. In the second book, an odd choice for president wins the election, and has someone with the last name Pence in their cabinet. Even the address where New York's Trump Tower now stands was mentioned. Personally, I believe that the former president's son Barron was named after the character in the book, not the other way around. But the connections found are certainly interesting. Number two. Mike Markham. In early 1995, 21 year old Mike Madman Markham attempted to build a time machine on his front porch. Of course, it didn't work, but that didn't deter him, and he kept working towards his goal. He later stole the expensive parts that he needed and caused a bit of trouble doing so. Then, after he got out of jail, he went on a radio program called Coast to Coast AM to talk about the machine he was building, saying that he was nearly finished and would be testing it soon, even giving out his phone number so that anyone with knowledge on the subject could help him out. Then he disappeared off the face of the earth. No one could find him for months, after which he said he was going to travel back in time only with his cell phone, and later that same week, an old story was dug up from the 1930s of a man who was found dead on a beach in California, encapsulated in some sort of metal tube with a strange device, the description of which matches that of a cell phone from the 1990s. Could that be the eventual fate of Mike? 
And finally, our number one, under the sink. In 2006, a Swedish man by the name of Hakan Nordvist was fixing a leak from a cracked pipe under his sink when he noticed something strange. A bright light that seemed to beckon him, in a way. He crawled in and suddenly appeared somewhere completely different, but he wasn't alone. He claims that he met someone there, or rather, he met himself. He claimed that he ran into himself, but a future version, perhaps around 70 years old. And since he knew no one would believe him, he pulled out his cell phone and filmed the meeting. The two men do look remarkably similar Similar, but the clincher for this whole story is when they rolled up their sleeves and revealed that they both have the exact same tattoo in the exact same place. We all know that one of the main rules of time travel is to never interact with yourself, so we're lucky he didn't cause a paradox and rip a hole in time and space. And at number 10, we have Matt Groening. This is a classic one. Everyone thinks that the creator of The Simpsons might be a time traveler. Wait, what? Why would some people think that the creator of a show would possess some sort of superpower? Well, unless you've been living under a log, you would know that the Simpsons have been able to predict the future several times. Everything from three-eyed fish being discovered, to the coronavirus, to Donald Trump becoming president. It would seem like the show has a strange knack for looking into the future. They even got the ending of Game of Thrones figured out. Now, what this is is probably just like dumb luck or just freaky coincidences because The Simpsons has been on for so long and is constantly doing social commentary so it would only be a matter of time before they figured things out. But what if he did actually come from the future and that is how he gets inspiration for his show? Or he has a link to the future that is telling him what might happen so he can work it into the show. Either way, I mean, you got to admit, those coincidences are pretty freaky. Coming in at number nine, we have Wim Hof. You might not know this guy, but you definitely should. Some of you might know him as his nickname, the Iceman. But Wim Hof is the man who unlocked some special ability within all of us. Through breathing exercises and some cold therapy, he has been able to take on temperatures that would kill most people in seconds. He also has been able to fight up harmful infections and keep any sort of sickness at bay. Not only that, but he has taught these techniques techniques to people all over the world. He has consistently claimed that he isn't special and that anyone can do this. But here's the thing. This apparently is a technique that has been used for thousands of years. It was just forgotten to our time and people. So did Wim Hof just rediscover something that was lost? Or did he travel from the past to the future to make sure that we never lost this amazing skill that he has been doing forever because he is a Time Lord? I'm gonna go with the Time Lord option. And at number eight, we have Jennifer Aniston. Here's one that's not like she has some sort of special knowledge. But let's just get real for a second. If you take a picture of Jennifer Aniston when she's 19 and a picture of her when she's 50, it looks pretty much the same. Either this lady is a time lord that has the ability to stop her cells from aging because she can bend space and time around herself and become forever young, or she has more money than God and she's spending it on keeping her body young forever. Honestly, it's uh, for sure the second one because she was on one of the most successful sitcoms of all time and then became one of the biggest stars in the whole world. So she for sure has the money to spend on staying fit and young. Also, not worrying about money is great for your stress, which would help you not look old. But it's more fun to speculate that she's come from the future or past or both, I guess. Coming in at number seven, we have Taylor Swift. People love to gossip about Miss Swift. I mean, she kind of deserves it because it seems like she's a massive liar and is super snaky when no one's looking. But at the same time, we shouldn't give that much attention to pop stars because there are way more important things to pay attention to. But one of the things that people got on Miss Swift about was the speculation that she was a time traveler. A lot of people think that she's actually Xena Lavi, who was a somewhat famous Satanist from the past who looks just like Taylor Swift. People say that she wasn't getting much traction as a Satanist back in the 80s, so she found a way to travel through time, make herself look younger, and then become a massive celebrity with her Time Lord abilities, and now with her position of power, she's going to take over the world with Satanism. All right, sliding into number six here, we have Will Smith. Back on the point about someone looking young forever, we have Will Smith, who has been gliding through life as one of the most successful stars who's ever lived, but at the same time, it's been a hot minute since this guy's had a hit movie. <laughs> How can you be rich and famous for so long without making a solid movie in over a decade? Well, that could be because he has been able to work his way through Hollywood and into the ranks of the elite by becoming a time lord and selling knowledge of the future. <laughs> This has to be the answer, obviously. It's not because he's a crazy hard worker and is apparently one of the nicest people you'll ever meet and is extremely supportive of the people around him and is actually a good actor even though not all of his movies are bangers. No way, the answer has to be Time Lord and it is for sure that he is confirmed Illuminati. 
Coming in number five, we have David Blaine. There is no way that you are standing on top of a pole for three days, getting locked in ice, and holding your breath until you break the breath hold record, and, okay, the balloon thing was kind of lame, but all those other things were way cooler. But can we say that he has some ability to master his body and push himself to levels that no one has ever seen before? That he has gone out of his way to master sleight of hand and become one of the best magicians of all time? Or could we say that this dude is for sure a time lord who has been using his abilities to capture the minds of people around him and make us all think that he's some sort of weird dude. No way man, the reason that he seems so strange is because he's from the year 3000 and he now has a watch that lets him blast back in time and pull off a bunch of crazy stunts. I'm just saying that when this dude dies you're going to want to check through all his pockets because he might have a device that can help you blast through time. At number 4 on this list we have Joe Exotic. Just looking at the way this guy's dressing and his haircut, I would have to say that he's, uh, he's from a different time. Like, for sure. <laughs> I mean, he is from Kansas. I've never been there, so is that just what everyone looks like in Kansas? I don't know. Let me know in the comments if that's the truth. It's probably not. Also, where is this dude getting all these tigers from, man? I would like to think that he's breeding them and selling them, but he's, uh, here's more than a logical idea. Wormhole. Hmm? This guy has been pulling tigers from the past to the future through a wormhole and he's actually doing this so tigers never go extinct. Which is a very noble task, but he should change his wardrobe because it is too easy for people to tell that he is a time traveler when he looks like that. I don't think we have an Illuminati confirmation on him yet, but I am working on it. I've got all my best men on this case. Coming in at number three, we have Bruce Lee. I mean, the man came out of nowhere. He was able to master kung fu and other martial arts. He showed the world how to do crazy things with your body and be a human weapon. His hands were registered as lethal weapons. He has one of the most badass quotes of all time. He became one of the biggest movie stars of all time. He changed a decade, was one of the healthiest people who ever lived, and then just died out of nowhere from taking some sort of weird medication. I mean, there is a ton of speculation as to what happened to Bruce Lee. We could spend hours just going through all the conspiracy theories. Theories. But how about this one? This dude was a time lord who just came back in time to shake things up, become famous, be cool, and then bounce out of nowhere to a different timeline where he could be a legend again. At number two on our list, I feel like I clap every time. Vladimir Putin. <laughs> I mean, out of everyone on this list so far, this is probably the least shocking. As a kid, he apparently went to the KGB office and told them that he wanted to join, and they told him that no one does this, please leave. <laughs> and then he spent his life becoming qualified until they accepted him, and then he became the supreme overlord of Russia. So yeah, this dude seems like he knows a thing or two about the future. Also, there's this picture. Is it a coincidence that all of the people lined up who look like Putin are in the army? I don't think so. This dude has been a time lord fighting in wars for centuries. Okay. And coming into the number one spot, we have Zendaya and Halle Berry. Time Lord works, man. They are in the present timeline so that you can't figure out who they are. But just look at a side-by-side -side picture of these two. Zendaya looks like she could be Halle Berry's daughter. And maybe there is a relation, but I'm going to put on my speculation hat and we're going to say that they're the exact same person. One famous light-skinned black woman moves out of Hollywood and the next one moves in. They are in a time loop as we speak, crossing over the younger version so we never suspect anything when Halle Berry passes but she already sent the younger version of herself into the past so she never has to die and when the older version dies all of her thoughts will be transferred into the younger version I mean it's right in front of you guys how can you not see this number 10 John Titor. In November of 2000, there was a huge uptick in activity on the Time Travel Institute forums, which is still a website with some interesting reading material. In between all of the crackpot theories was a group of posts that seemed a bit too detailed to ignore. A man named John Titor was posting, and he claimed to be from the year 2036, and was sent back in time by his government to the year 1975 to retrieve an old IBM computer. They needed it for some debugging back in his home time. But as a little time vacation, he decided to stop off in the year 2000 for some fun. The posts on the forum detailed the technology he used to travel, along with future events like a US Civil War in 2012 and a Third World War in 2015. Obviously none of this happened, but his posts were so convincing and full of things that could have been possible, or could have worked in theory, that it may have been true 
but just by revealing the information, he changed the timeline. We can't disprove any of the things he said, and no one has heard from him since. Number 9. Hipster Time Traveler In 1941, the South Fork Bridge was reopened in Gold Bridge, BC, Canada. This photo was snapped to commemorate the event, and everyone out there seems to be dressed in their Sunday best, and no one paid any mind to it at all. But when it was uploaded to be part of the Virtual Museum of Canada, users found something odd, and it spread across the net like wildfire. In the back row of people, there's a man dressed in what one may now call hipster attire. Sunnies, in a graphic tee under a textured cardigan, and he even has the I couldn't care less hairstyle to go along with it. Some think he's from the future and inadvertently walked into the frame of this shot, and others think he's just some guy from the 40s who didn't get the dress code memo. Number 8. Future Photograph A man named Edward claimed that in 2004, while living in LA and working in a lab, he was given the opportunity of a lifetime, to be sent forward in time 3,000 years and come back with evidence to prove it. A massive achievement for the human species. He claimed in a 2018 interview that when he was sent forward, he was still in Los Angeles. But something was different. He was on a large wooden platform, and everything, all of the buildings and everything around him was made of wood. And water stretched out as far as the eye could see. When he looked down, he saw the remnants of LA under the water. He claimed that climate change had destroyed the planet, and water levels had risen to devour the entire city. And he has a photograph to prove it. I'm not sure if I believe that the photograph is real, but I think that the idea of LA being underwater due to climate change is totally plausible and very frightening. Number 7. Back to the 40s In 1988, Strange Magazine 2 published the account of a man named L.C. who claimed that back in the summer of 69, he and his business partner were driving through Louisiana, and out of nowhere the weather changed completely. Then ahead of them appeared an old car, a 40s turtleback, going extremely slow. The car had an orange license plate with 1940 written on it, and what is even stranger is that antique cars like that weren't allowed on the road unless it was for a ceremonial parade. It was moving so slow that they thought something may be wrong, so they pulled up beside it and saw that the driver and her child were wearing clothing from the 40s as well. Once they gestured for her to pull over, the car vanished, right in front of their eyes. Another eyewitness also corroborated the story. Now the question is, who was the time traveler, L.C. or the woman in the car? Number 6. Mary Antoinette In 1901, two professors from St. Hugh's College in Oxford traveled to the Palace of Versailles, where one of the last French royals, Marie Antoinette, lived until she was executed in 1793. They were walking the grounds when the two of them both reported seeing many people, including Antoinette herself, in 1780s attire walking the grounds. The area they were in was a small retreat built in the garden by Louis XVI for Marie as a gift, so there is a reason to expect seeing her there, though it would be incredibly shocking. Both of them claimed to see the same thing, and all of the apparitions appeared as soon as the tour guide came back to the area. Very strange indeed. Number 5. Air Raid Warning J. Bernard Hutton and Joachim Brandt were journalists visiting the Hamburg shipyard in 1932. It was by all accounts an uneventful day of photographs and interviews. Then suddenly, bombs and gunfire fell from the sky. There were explosions, and the anti-air guns began to fire back with deafening booms. They took photos of the planes in the sky and the guns firing back as they escaped. And when they got back to the city, no one believed their story. They thought the photos would convince everyone, but once they were developed, there was no war zone to be seen. But 11 years later, on the same day they had visited, the British conducted Operation Gomorrah, a raid on the Hamburg airbase, and the photos from that look exactly like what the two men had described. Too bad the other pictures didn't develop so we could compare them. Did they see the war early? I guess we'll never know. Number 4. The Montauk Project Preston Nichols writes in his book that at Montauk Air Force Base on Long Island, dangerous experiments involving time travel were being conducted, and that he uncovered repressed memories of the experiments in the 80s. His book later became the inspiration to Stranger Things, as he claims that young people with psychic abilities were experimented on and exploited to use their powers to open portals and gateways into different times, one of which being to 1943 on the USS Eldridge, where the Philadelphia experiment allegedly took place. 
place. The goal of that was to make their ships invisible, and apparently it worked, but the ship was also sent 10 minutes back in time, and the crew went mad. The fact that these two projects linked together seems to show that there was something special about the two experiments. Perhaps time travel attracts more time travel like a magnet. Maybe they'll explain it in Season 5 of Stranger Things. Number 3. The Man from Tored. In 1954, in Tokyo, Japan, a man was stopped while going through customs for missing something on his form. When he was being questioned, the immigration officers looked at his passport and everything seemed to be on the up and up, except that the country of origin didn't exist. The man claimed to be from a country called Tored, and he had the passport stamps to prove it too. He said that it was between France and Spain, and he got in increasingly more aggressive every time he was told it didn't exist. Why would somebody say that his home country didn't exist? When asked to point on a map to where his home country was, he pointed to what is now known as Andorra, but insisted that it was Tered. They locked him up overnight to continue questioning the next day, but when they went to look for him in the morning, he was nowhere to be found. Perhaps he managed to find a way back to his own timeline. Number 2. Andrew Carlson In 2003, Andrew Carlson was arrested for insider trading. Over a two week period, he had turned $800 into $350 million. It is impossible to make that kind of money without having some sort of inside knowledge. He claimed it was because he was from the year 2256 and came back to make money. He made all sorts of predictions, not just ones for his investments. He also correctly predicted the exact date of the US-Iraq invasion. Soon after he was released on bail, he disappeared, never to be seen again. This one actually seems like something someone with a time machine would do. Squander it on making money. Number 1. Victor Goddard In 1935, airman Victor Goddard was sent to inspect an abandoned airfield in Edinburgh. As he flew over, he noted its rundown, dilapidated state and that it was deserted. But on his way back, the weather changed drastically. There was heavy cloud cover and rain, but just as quickly as it came, it cleared again. And down on the airfield, he saw people in blue mechanic suits running around, working on yellow planes that he couldn't identify, and as a decorated airman, he knew his planes. It wasn't until four years later that he went back to the the airfield to see people in blue mechanic suits working on the yellow planes he saw on the runway years before. Miles Magisters, which were not even manufactured until 1938. In our number 10 spot we have the woman on her cell phone. There is a painting by Ferdinand George Waldmuller from 1860 called The Expected One. This painting shows a woman walking through what appears to be a trail while holding an object which looks an awful lot like a cell phone. She she also is seemingly transfixed by what she's looking at, similar to how people look at their cell phones when scrolling or sending a text today. People have looked at this painting and have perceived this woman as a possible time traveler and hey, I see it. What else could that object be? What else could a woman of that time be holding? What could be as small as a cell phone and also something that she could be so focused on? I'm sure there are quite a few answers to this. but. Whatever. We are going to say that it's clearly a cell phone and she's clearly a time traveler. The end. If you're enjoying this video so far, don't forget to smash that like button as it will really help us out. In our number 9 spot, we have actor Rupert Grint. There is a Scottish painter by the name of Sir David Wilkie who lived in the 18th and 19th centuries and whom looked very similar to a very famous actor today. Fans of Rupert Grint, who played the infamous Ron Weasley in the Harry Potter franchise, were shocked to see a portrait of David and how he looked looks extremely similar to Rupert. Could it be possible that Rupert is really just a time traveler who has traveled to this time to capture our hearts and souls on the screen? A lot of people think so as you cannot deny that the two look quite similar. However, personally I think this is one painting I disagree with as I don't think they look enough alike for this to be the same person. I know that some people share a theory that time travelers change certain features on their face so that they're not recognizable, but something makes me think that this theory is a bit of a stretch and truly isn't the same person. I don't know. If we were to believe that time travelers exist, of course. And we do. <laughs> In our number 8 spot we have Keanu Reeves. Okay, if I could get on board with any celebrity being a time traveler, it would definitely be Keanu Reeves because he is just magical. Do you agree? There's something about him that seemingly makes him likable to literally everyone on the planet. I truly wonder if there's anyone who dislikes him. So he is either magical or a time traveler, but that would also make him magical, so he's probably both. <laughs> 
There is a very mysterious painting from the 1500s of a man that has a striking resemblance to Keanu Reeves. This painting has made its rounds online and has convinced a lot of people that he must be a time traveler. This is definitely one of the paintings on this list that truly feels like it could be real because of how similar Keanu looks to this man. The thing is though, Keanu seems to have a lot of people throughout history that looks like him, including King Charlemagne around 800 AD, as well as the 20th century French actor Paul Mountet. So it's because of all of these possible time traveler sightings that the internet is convinced that Keanu is immortal. And I'm here for it. I love him. In our number seven spot, we have a man and his cell phone. Here we have yet another mysterious painting where this time a man is holding an object that is seemingly looking like a cell phone. I don't know. It looks like a cell phone. It seemingly is a cell phone. This is an oil painting made by a painter named Peter de Hooch from the year 1670. Some people have said that this man was a messenger and that it was a letter that holding not a phone and that seems definitely more likely. However, this cell phone theory is way more fun. <laughs> Imagine if people had cell phones in those days. They would have definitely been called witches as this was around the time where the witch trials were taking place all around the world. So it's probably accurate to say that if he was holding a cell phone, he would have probably been more discreet about it, or maybe not. Perhaps he's a cheeky kind of guy and loves to play with fire. In any case, I personally think that it looks more like a phone that he's holding than a letter, so I'm gonna say this one is definitely a time traveler. In our number six spot, we have Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone has been trending online recently because people believe that he could be a potential time traveler. Why, you may ask? Well, it's because of a painting of a man called Pope Gregory the Ninth approving the Vatical Decretals. You have to admit, this guy looks like he is Sylvester Stallone. The resemblance is uncanny. If this is not Sylvester, then it has to be someone directly related to him by blood. Right? Th that is the only conclusion. Okay, but in all seriousness, if this guy is not related to him and this is not him, then this is a very good example of how it is possible to have a twin somewhere else in the world, possibly on a different time frame, but it is still possible that someone else could exist in the history of the world that looks just like you. Such a cool thought. In our number five spot, we have Nicolas Cage. Okay guys, here is another one. Man, this list is actually kind of blowing my mind. There are way too many paintings that look exactly like famous actors. This one looks like actor Nicolas Cage. I am a massive, massive fan of the National Treasure movies, so I definitely have a sweet spot for good old Nicolas. But also, he encouraged Johnny Depp to become an actor, so bless you, Nick. <laughs> you gave us a gift we cannot ever repay you for. Anyways, there is a painting of a Mexican emperor, Maximiliano of Habsburgo, I hope I didn't butcher that, and Sir Nick looks like his doppelganger. But let's be real, he probably is. <laughs> the only thing is people seem to say that Nick looks like he's a lot of people from different time periods, so honestly, who knows? He does have a very mysterious quality to him, so perhaps that is why people are quick to think that he might be, you know, a time traveler. In our number four spot, we have Jack Gleason. This is the only one on this list that is not a painting, but just needed an honorable mention. Honestly, this was a hard list to research, so, you know, just love me. <laughs> Jack Gleason, one of the stars of Game of Thrones that played the infamous Joffrey, looks surprisingly a lot like a statue of the Roman Emperor Caligula. Almost identical. If you have watched Game of Thrones, then you would know that his character is the king for a while and what a terrible king he was. Perhaps he had some practice from once being a Roman emperor. Some say yes. <laughs> this statue is too much like him that he must be a time traveler. Either that or he's immortal and he's been alive since this time. In our number three spot, we have Michael Jackson. This is a really interesting one. People think that it's possible that Michael Jackson was a time traveler. Okay, if Michael Jackson was a time traveler, then maybe he isn't actually dead and he just traveled to another time. Michael is known for being someone who loved art, so it's possible that he even styled one of his looks based off of a painting that weirdly looks like him, but truly, it is rather strange that this painting really looks like him. Perhaps he actually traveled back in time in a time machine and someone painted him and that is how this painting exists? Ooh, what if, instead of being dead, he's trapped in the painting? 
like what happens in the movie The Witches, based on Roald Dahl's book. It's fun to imagine scenarios like this. Anyways, there's no denying the resemblance and the similarities in their fashion choices. Pretty strange. In our number two spot, we have Peter Dinklage. If you do not know who Peter Dinklage is, then I can only assume that you haven't viewed one of the greatest television series of all time, Game of Thrones. Oh, and also, Elf, what a movie. Anyways, Peter is one of the most iconic stars from Game of Thrones, probably the fan favorite besides Arya, Sansa, Jon Snow. Okay, never mind. there were too many great characters. There is a painting of a man that looks just like Peter though. The painting is called The Portrait of Sebastian de Mora by a man named Diego Velasquez. It was painted between 1644 to 1645. It truly looks just like Peter, so I understand why people look at this painting and immediately think it's him. Is everyone a time traveler in Hollywood? It feels like yes. In our number one spot, we have Mark Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg, the creator of Facebook, has definitely been called a robot, an alien, a shapeshifter, and now I'm learning that people believe him to be a possible time traveler, and it is because of a painting of the King of Spain, Philip IX. The painting was said to have been done in 1624 by a man named Diego Velasquez. I may be butchering his name, but hey, a trad. <laughs> He looks like an awful lot like Mark. Some same droopy eyes, long face, hair color, nose, and also possibly hair texture. Kinda hard to make out, but it looks like it. The only thing is, the king appears to have bigger lips, but who knows, maybe the artist did that. Or perhaps Mark had a lip reduction. <laughs> Anyways, not sure I'm on board with this theory fully, but the robot theory might have some solid arguments. Oh.